Take summer in style. Wild West got it for summer. From tops to bottoms, the newest looks and the best names. Summer's here for you. Wild West, we've got it. I'm David Stanfield, and welcome to the North Shore of Maui in the Hawaiian Islands for the Maui Windsurfing Grand Prix. This international regatta has attracted the world's finest windsurfers, and the competition promises to be action-packed with course racing, dual surf slalom, and the high-flying freestyle event. Hold on to your sails for the windsurfing explosion. Windsurfing has already amassed a huge competitive network with regional, national, and world championships and will soon be an Olympic sport. The sports champions are all here on Maui's scenic north coast. Mike Waltz, fresh from his world championship victory in Japan. The incredible Robbie Nash, who won his first world championship at the age of 13. 23-year-old Richard White, an ex-windsurfing instructor that has rapidly emerged as one of the sport's top contenders. Here, the young designers and competitors test and refine their equipment, searching for more speed, more control, lighter weight. These innovators are competing to be the first to complete the still elusive and radical 360 degree aerial loop. Just imagine what it would be like pulling yourself through a force five wind, the muscles in your arms singing with the power, the salt spray in your hair, unless you're bald, leaping the waves like a marine kangaroo, dancing a pas de deux with your sail, weight, strength, grace, all harmonized in an act of joyous homage to the eternal might of the shifting winds. Wouldn't you like to do that? Well, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you?
14, 1981. Newport Harbor Yacht Club, Newport Beach, California. These sailing aficionados are about to embark on an important international yachting event. Roy, Tom, thank you. Roy, on the grinders. Um, we'll have you on the main sheet. Um, Bob will call the sail trim, both main and head sail. Uh, if we have to tack, we'll have uh, Mark. Cabo 81, the sixth biannual regatta from Newport Beach to Cabo San Lucas at the tip of Baja Mexico Sur. Expectation and tension are hidden by smiles. Sail with our dreams 
Antarctica for adventure, for the experience, and to find what I could find in the wilderness, perhaps even wisdom. Just beyond our boat's thin hull, beyond this shell of human civilization, the world is wild and deadly and very beautiful. People asked me if I hadn't had enough adventure for one lifetime. But life itself is an adventure and a challenge. I must live using all my skill and strength and mind if I am ever to understand or be fulfilled as a man. And so I have come to Antarctica. We didn't have a detailed map of this part of Antarctica. We were told of a mountain, 8,000 feet high. A mountain that had no name. A pyramid mountain with a crown of ice. This nameless mountain was our goal. of the world. 2,500 meters high, more than 8,000 feet. The face is 60 degrees.
come from the United States to raft one of South America's and the world's grandest and most scenic rivers, the Bio Bio. Almost as a bonus, this, or a plague, this river has fantastic rapids. Um, they are the most serious rapids of any river that's commercially run. What makes them so serious is not only their size and their intensity, but the sequence in which they come. I can't think of any stretch anywhere on any of the rivers that I've done or heard about that has a sequence as serious as, say, Lost Yak, down followed by Lava South, followed by Cyclops. It's just critical not to make mistakes. I expect to have some real excitement in the Whitewater Rapids. The Bio Bio is supposed to be the, that river in the world that has the, the most exciting runnable whitewater. And that means we're going to be in for some pretty big rapids, and we're going to be in for a lot of excitement. Uh, we're going to be wet a lot of the time, uh, but we're also going to be having a whale of a lot of fun. In July of 1981, the 31st semi-annual Trans-Pacific Yacht Race was held. 74 yachts in various categories set out from Point Firm in Los Angeles to sail across 2,225 miles of open ocean. Regardless of category or handicap, all the vessels were pushing to be first to arrive at the finish line, Diamond Head, Honolulu. Spectators at the finish in Hawaii witnessed the closest boat-to-boat -boat competition ever occurring in the 75-year history of the Transpac. First place seesawed between the sloops Merlin and Christina at least four times in the last 10 miles of the race. The Transpact is one of the most exciting and prestigious yachting events regularly held and our crews captured over 17,000 feet of the 1981 competition. Along with the start and finish, our cameras were aboard the Class A yacht Primavera throughout the entire voyage. Transpact 81, a 57 minute sports documentary is now in post production. When at last the work was done, the artist, waving his wings, found he could buoy himself upwards and hang suspended, poising himself on the beaten air. Then, rising on his wings, he flew off, encouraging Icarus to follow, and looked back from his flight to see how his son managed his wings. Hi, 
I'm David Stanfield, and this is Telluride, Colorado, 8,745 feet above sea level, the site of the first World Aerobatic Hang Gliding Championships. 3,000 feet above me is Gold Hill, where the world's best pilots will be taking off for $5,000 in prize money and a million dollars worth of thrills. And the pilots David is talking about are the hottest in the sport today. Rob Kells, president of Will's Wings and seated second in this competition. Dan Racanelli, favored to win in a seating by other pilots. Dave Gibson, a sail designer for ultralight products. Wayne Bowen, flying a glider of his own design. Wayne is a pilot to watch. And Pat Maggard, a 10-year veteran of hang gliding at the age of 26. Vinci wrote, for once you have tasted of flight, you will walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward, for there you have been, and there you will always long to return. Saw my face in any window any day. And I 